Hello everyone, my name is Yong Kang He. I'm a senior product manager of Semantic Cover Network of Solutions. In this video, we will be demonstrating how to get your virtual machines up and running within seconds or minutes, rather than hours or even days. After watching this video, you should be able to explain the benefits of using instant recovery for VMware, know the prerequisites of IRV, and restore your VM using IRV. Let's start from the benefits of using IRV. So what are the benefits of using IRV? Well, this feature gives you the ability to instantly power on the VM from disk-based backup target. Instant recovery provides the ability to boot a VM directly from backup storage without needing to first wait for the traditional restore process, which may take hours or even days. After your VM is up and running, you can use storage vMotion to migrate your active VMD case from backup data store to your production data store. Okay, let's move to the next topic, talking about IRV prerequisites. First of all, you need a network of 7.6 and the backup media must be disk. Secondly, backup images must be created using the new VMware policy type. In addition, the Taki ESX server for the restore must be vSphere 5.0 or higher and must support storage vMotion. Finally, the restore host must be Windows and uh, NFS client services must be enabled. All right, let's move to IRV demo. In my lab, I have three VMs. VM1 Yongkang 2 is my 7.6 master and media server and also my restore host. VM2 ESX1 is my ESXi 5.1 with story vMotion feature. A couple of VMs are running on the ESX host. VM Win2 is the target VM. We are going to destroy it first and then restore it instantly. VM3 vCenter1 is my vCenter server 5.1. Most of the operations will be done from Yongkang2 and vCenter1. I will show you all the details from NetBackup and vCenter console. Generally, three steps involved. By the way, with 7.6, it is command line only. The GUI and the Wizard support is coming next. The first step is to initiate the restore from command line. The second step is to migrate the VM from backup data store to your production data store. The final step is to complete the restore. Now it's time to see the live demo. I will connect to vCenter server first to simulate a disaster by removing VMWin2 from disk. Okay, from vCenter console, right click VMWin2 and select delete from disk and confirm the deletion. Shortly, VMWin2 disappeared from my vCenter console. Now I will connect to my master server, Yongkang2. As you can see from the activity monitor of NetBack of console, job ID 142, 143, and 144 are the successful backup jobs for client VMWin2. And it took roughly 30 minutes to complete the backup. Job ID 145 is a traditional restore job, which took almost 40 minutes. I will go to the command line and initiate the restore for VMWin2. Here is the command mb restore vm minus vmw minus capital C vmwin2 minus vmpo minus ir underscore activate minus temper underscore location temper ds 
minus VMW indicates the type of virtual machine to restore is VMware. By the way, Hyper-V support is coming next. Minus capital C VM Win 2 is to specify the client name you are going to restore. Specify minus VMPO to power on the virtual machine after the restore. Minus IR underscore activate will start the restore by mounting the backup images as a NFS data store. The data store becomes accessible to the ESX host. Minus temper underscore location temp DS is a temporary data store on the ESX server. The data store must exist before you run the command. All writes occur on this data store until story v motion is complete. Now I will press enter to kick off the restore. All right, now the command returned successfully. As you can see from NetBack console, there are two new jobs created. Job ID 150 is the parent job with job type VM instant recovery. Job ID 151 is the child job which activates instant recovery. Job ID 151 completes after just two minutes. By now, the VM Win 2 actually has already been restored and powered on. Comparing my traditional restore, it's 20 times fast, which is great. In your real production environment, the restore could be more than 100 times fast as you have a powerful server with faster network and faster storage. Let's move to vCenter console to see if the VM comes back and see what are the tasks involved during the restore. As you can see from vCenter 1 console, the first task created a NAS data store from backup storage. The second task created the virtual machine. The third task reconfigured the virtual machine. The fourth task created a snapshot for the VM. And the final job is to power on the virtual machine. Now let's move to the second step to migrate active VMDKs from backup data store to production data store using storage vMotion. Right click VMWin2 and select migrate. In the pop-up window, select change data store, then click next. In the next screen, I select ESX1-DataStore1 at the target data store. By making this selection, the migration will copy all the data from the NFS data store named mb underscore ir underscore yongkang one underscore esx1 to esx1 dash data store one. Click next and then click finish. The job will start immediately and you will see the task created from vCenter console called relocate virtual machine. The migration might take some time depends on how fast your server network and the storage. For this demo, I will pause the recording till the job completes. Okay, as you can see from vCenter console, the story vMotion task completed successfully. Now let's move to the final step to complete the whole restore process. Let's back to NetBackup console. Look, the parent job, job ID 150, is still active because it is waiting for you to complete the restore process. Let's go to the command line again and issue another command to complete the restore. In order to complete the restore, you need instant recovery ID. You can find the ID either from job details of activity monitor or from a command. I will use the command to find the ID. Run the command. 
mb restore vm minus ir underscore list vm click enter as you can see from the screen the instant recovery id is one now let's complete the restore by running another command mb restore minus ir underscore down one click enter this command completes the virtual machine instant recovery job it also removes the netbackup nfs data store from the activity monitor a new job with job id 152 and the job type of stop for instant recovery completed successfully and the parent job job id 150 now also completed successfully with that i finished the demo thanks for watching if you have any questions suggestions or comments please feel free to drop me an email my email address is yongkang underscore he at semantic.com. Thanks once again.